our second crisis type are organizational events, and so I'll introduce what they are and examples of them. We'll also take a look at the implications of organizational events on stakeholder attitudes and crisis response. Remember, the assumption that we make is that different crises warrant different crisis responses. As I mentioned, you'll see different topologies for crisis type. However, for me, this one really focuses on material blame potential and so complements our stakeholder-centered view. So let's take a look at organizational events. They are different from transgressions because the material blame for the crisis is less clear. While the organization may have direct or indirect culpability, it may not have done anything wrong. However, in the case of organizational events, there are still crises because they directly involve and affect the organization and its stakeholders and get a substantial amount of public attention. What's particularly important about organizational events is the degree to which different stakeholder groups attribute blame to the organization. This will often be the telling point about the likely outcomes of such a crisis. So again, let's take a look at some examples of the types of organizational events and cases illustrating them. One of the most common types of organizational event crises that organizations face are mergers, whether they're successful or failed. These can catch people's interest because of what they mean for employees or other different groups. In about 2008, Lloyd's and TSB merged, and then in 2013, they were forced to split in order to meet competition rules and regulations in the UK, leaving 4.6 million customers in a different bank than they thought that they were. Now, while all the customers were offered the same accounts, terms, and so on, this not only created problems like we saw with the TSB website crashing, but it also led to redundancies with about 9,000 employees losing their jobs across the UK. So mergers and failed mergers have a host of legal, consumer, and certainly issues-related crises that can emerge. Labor problems and strikes are also really interesting examples of organizational events because the question can sometimes be, for whom is this a crisis? Certainly, it's a crisis for the organization at the end of the industrial action, but that doesn't necessarily end there. Striking can be a potential crisis for the organization, government, unions, specific groups on strike, and even the public. And in strikes, the key question is where do users of the organization, as well as the general public, place blame for the inconveniences or problems caused? In some countries, unions and organizations work very closely together on a regular basis and have positive relationships. But in many countries, the relationship is often adversarial and the public can be divided by the issue of striking. The junior doctor strike in the UK is a good example of this. In this case, doctors were striking against the government, but showed support for their organization, the NHS. Media coverage of the strike as well as public opinion was really divided, so it was a crisis for multiple groups that had to be communicatively managed by the NHS, by the conservative government, and certainly by the doctors and unions as well because it represented a threat to all of them. Between the 1980s and 2008, much of the West experienced consistent economic growth. But that has never meant that all industries and all organizations shared in that growth. However, since the economic crash of 2008 and changes brought as a result of the emerging digital economy, there have been a lot of industries and organizations facing economic downturns that forced the organization to act. So this is another type of organizational event that can happen. We certainly saw this with the banking crash, and we saw a lot of different models for dealing with this. However, one industry that has faced increasing problems in some parts of it is the retail industry. As traditional retail driven by high street shop locations is being minimized or replaced by the digital marketplace, a lot of companies have had to start making different kinds of decisions. Beginning in 2013, Swedish retailer H&M has been facing a lot of challenges, from downsizing its labor force to, in 2017, announcing that because of shifts in the digital drivers, it was not going to be opening as many new stores in new locations. From a crisis communication side, 
these don't always translate into meaningful crises or big crises if they're managed well. However, as consumer confidence begins to slide or employee satisfaction erodes, we can find complaints and problems that begin to emerge and can grow into different kinds of crises. Finally, depending on what country you live in and where you work, there is a reality of violence of in the workplace ranging from hostile environments caused by sexual harassment to shootings. In most cases the organization is not directly to blame for these situations and is often one of the victims. However, they classify in the case of organizational events because there can be culpability and blame assigned to the organization by stakeholders. One very daft example of this was the 2006 altercation between UKIP members of the EU Parliament, Stephen Wolf, pictured on the ground after having been punched by the aptly named fellow UKIP MEP, Mike Hookham. Certainly this represents a problem for both of these public figures, but it's also a crisis for the political party of UKIP, as well as potentially for the European Parliament to a lesser degree, because in this case, the violent incident occurred there. It is a transgression on the part of the boxing parliamentarians, but for their party in the, as well as the European Parliament, it is an organizational event. Something has, that has happened that they have to manage, and where some sort of blame can be attributed by some stakeholders. It's certainly also an event that received a healthy chunk of news coverage, so it was something that did require a response. So from the ridiculous to the life-changing, organizational events represent a threat to organizations, groups, public figures affected by them, but the question really is what are the communication implications? To begin to answer this question, we again come back to our stakeholder relationship management model to ask the question, how does the relationship between the stakeholders and the crisis affect organizational events? Like with transgressions, the critical component comes down to the evaluation of the crisis being negative for the organization. That is to say, will stakeholders care about the crisis and will they blame the organization? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, then the same risks and communication needs exist as exist for transgressions. But how they manifest themselves and what stakeholders really want from organizations facing events isn't as well studied. Uncertainty avoidance theory and organization change theories suggest that people might want reassurances, especially for internal stakeholders. But there is limited development of research focusing on these types of crises linking to specific organizational and out stakeholder outcomes. So for more detailed information, here are some good resources to start with.